Cologne, 1977. Fire rips through a warehouse, causing 120 million pounds worth of damage. Kurz nach halb drei heute Nachmittag brach der Brand bei den Kölner Fortwerken aus. Shortly after 2.30 this afternoon, fire broke out in the Ford factories in Cologne. A warehouse covering an area of more than 100,000 square meters and housing spare parts and accessories for the whole of Europe went up in flames. Since just before three, all 15 fire brigades... It's classified as one of the world's biggest ever fire losses. Questions are asked all over Europe. How did the fire start? Could it happen again? More importantly, why and how did it spread so rapidly when the warehouse was equipped with a sprinkler system? The Cologne warehouse used up-to-date high storage technology. So, was it simply a case that the sprinkler system which they and thousands of other warehouses used was out of date? If so, could the fire insurers and warehouse owners of Europe expect to witness a repeat of the Cologne disaster? An international organization which advises on general rules for fire protection is the CEA, the Comité European des Assurances. The CEA realized that as a direct result of the Cologne fire, their rules governing the use of sprinkler systems to protect high pile storage had to be re-examined, rechecked, and retested. To undertake such a thorough investigation, full-scale testing facilities were required. This pointed the CEA to FERTO, the Fire Insurer's Research and Testing Organization based in Boreham Wood, England. FERTO specializes in testing all kinds of fire protection equipment and systems. Ferto also conducts research into the flammability of materials and products, as used in the construction and furnishing of buildings and ships. With their experienced staff, up-to-date laboratories, computers and test rig facilities, FERTO were well appointed to carry out a comprehensive test program for the CEA. A program which would question and evaluate the CEA rules governing sprinkler systems for high storage. The CEA rules are often reviewed and updated. In recent years, the trend in modern warehousing has been to use plastic packaging and to store goods higher and higher. Both these techniques present an increased fire risk so, did the CEA rules regarding sprinkler systems for high storage properly take account of these increased risks? To find out, FERTO planned a series of tests. The aim? To see just how effective ceiling-mounted sprinklers are when high pile storage catches fire. Such tests could not be conducted in a laboratory. There was only one way to find out the performance of sprinklers in such a fire. By starting one. In actual fact, the test program involves starting 13 full-scale fires. In these fires, five factors had to be examined. The use of post-pallet and freestanding storage. The relationship between water density and storage height. The area of sprinkler operation and discharge density the use of conventional and spray sprinklers. 
sprinkler temperature rating and response time. Painstaking preparations were made prior to the full-scale fire tests. And how's the data going to be recorded? Have you decided on this yet? Yes, we're going, it's going to be fed through a data log on to disks. If we look at this drawing. First of all, a huge dummy warehouse was purpose-built inside a former airship hangar. The hangar at RAF Cardington in Bedfordshire is a permanent test facility of the fire research station. Measuring 30 metres square with a ceiling height of 9 metres, the dummy warehouse took several months to design and build. 100 sprinklers were mounted under a suspended ceiling supported by a framework of steel girders. Three different types of sprinkler heads were used. Spray and conventional types with glass bulbs and temperature ratings of 141 degrees and 68 degrees Celsius. And a spray sprinkler type with a fast response soldered link element and a temperature rating of 74 degrees Celsius. Water for the sprinklers was supplied from specially installed diesel pumps drawing from two huge water tanks with total capacities of 402 cubic meters. For each test, the dummy warehouse was stored with hundreds of cardboard cartons full of polystyrene chips. Each test was ignited by a piece of heptane-soaked firebrand inserted into the bottom box of the main stack. Three, two, one, ignition. The fire was then allowed to develop naturally. Video and still cameras were used to record the minute-by-minute -minute progress of each test, whilst photo personnel take recorded on-the-spot observations. Flames were about three metres below the ceiling. About one box in into stack. Flame and about one metre above the top of the stack. Flames now one pallet into the main stack. Steve Evans, head of the appliances division at Ferto, took overall charge of the tests. Five, four, three, two, one, ignition. We devised the test program so that we could obtain the maximum amount of information from the minimum number of tests. We only kept to the minimum number of changes between each test so that the significance of this change could be assessed from the test results. Going up. The first flames are only about three metres now above the boxes. The change could have been just one parameter, like the density of discharge, the type of sprinkler, the temperature rating of the sprinkler, or the height of storage. Temperature's 221 in the centre. Just licking over the top of the boxes. Flames about a metre and a half high. Ignition. Each sprinkler was scanned every six seconds and monitored for its time of operation and adjacent air temperature. The sprinklers were allowed to behave like an ordinary sprinkler installation, but with one important exception, the density was kept constant, no matter how many sprinklers were operating. This way, it was possible to assess the actual parameters against the rules for each test. Water spray is falling on the bubble. The water pressure within the grid system was measured at six positions Two, and used to one, maintain its density ignition. at preset levels. The target rack is still burning. Other measurements monitored at 18 second intervals included air velocity, temperature gradient below the ceiling, oxygen concentration, one, and steelwork ignition. temperature. Right, that's good. There's water falling outside the target area. Two, one, 
pressure. Uh, there's goods falling out in the aisle. Two computer-controlled data logging systems kept a constant check on a myriad of measurements. In all, over half a million test readings were recorded. Two, one, ignition. One, ignition. We have ignition. Each of the 13 fires was allowed to continue until it was decided that no more information could be obtained. Then, after each test was concluded, the area of fire-damaged goods was compared. All the data and recordings from the tests were collated and presented by Furto in an 80-page in-depth report. Furto's initial conclusions from the results suggested a number of points. Firstly, when post-pallet storage is stacked on several levels, it appears that the entire stack can be subjected to fire. It's important, therefore, that close attention should be given to aisle widths and the area of each stack. Secondly, for standard response sprinklers, the tests indicated that conventional sprinklers perform more effectively than spray sprinklers. Thirdly, the performance of fast response sprinklers showed a significant improvement in operation. And this is an area which undoubtedly warrants further testing and research. Fourthly, the tests indicated that the density height relationships recommended by the CEA rules would appear to be valid when conventional sprinklers are used with a temperature rating of 141 degrees Celsius. When a finger of doubt was pointed at one of their rules, the CEA wasted no time in calling in the experts at FERTO and providing the necessary finance to carry out a thorough test program. The investigation cost half a million pounds, but when seen in relation to the cost of damage caused by warehouse fires, few would disagree that it was money well spent. The insurers and warehouse owners of Europe can be confident that the CEA are constantly updating and scrutinizing their fire rules and guidelines. It's up to industry to follow them.